Like many processes, running a human body creates a lot of waste products. Your body, with the exception of your brain, uses the lymphatic system to take up these waste products from the blood. Once the waste products enter the lymphatic vessels, they are carried to the lymphatic ducts, where are they dumped back into the veins and are finally eliminated from your body via the liver or the kidneys. But there's one problem. This system does not work in your brain because of the blood-brain barrier, which prevents waste products from leaving the blood vessels of the brain. Instead of using lymphatic vessels, your brain uses its own cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF, to clean out waste products. Produced by specialized blood vessels in the brain, cerebral spinal fluid is a clear and colorless body fluid, which provides a fluid-filled environment. And this allows your brain and spinal cord to float, which reduces stress on these structures and offers critical protection. The composition of CSF is similar to plasma, which is found in blood, but contains fewer proteins and different ion concentrations. CSF also travels along small brain arteries and then washes through brain tissue to clear waste products, which then drain back into channels that run along veins in your brain. From here, the waste-laden CSF drains into lymphatic vessels and is finally eliminated from your body by the liver or the kidneys. This is known as the glymphatic system and it is your brain's equivalent to the lymphatic system, which works to clear waste in the rest of your body. Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Connolly, and today we're going to talk about your glymphatic system. This is your brain's method of getting rid of waste products, and it primarily occurs during slow wave sleep. The workings of this lymphatic system were not discovered until 2012 when adequate technology was finally available to observe real-time fluid flow in a live mammalian brain. Researchers used two-photon microscopy to observe the flow of labeled CSF in a living mouse brain. They did this by drilling a small hole into the skull of the living mouse and then observing the path of CSF flow inside tunnel-like structures running along blood vessels of the brain of the mouse. They then saw CSF leave these tunnels and flow into the brain tissue itself and then drain out through similar tunnel-like structures paralleling the veins in the brain. From here, the CSF exited the brain and was drained into the cervical lymphatic vessels of the mouse. In 2024, researchers used sequential MRI imaging of brain surgery patients to show a similar, show that a similar type of glymphatic system operated in humans. The name glymphatic system is a combination of the word lymphatic and G, GL for glial cell, which refers to a type of supporting cell in the brain called the astrocyte, which plays a crucial role in the whole process of the glymphatic system. So why is the glymphatic system important and what happens when it's not working well? The glymphatic system clears metabolic waste products and toxins from your brain by allowing CSF, cerebral spinal fluid, and interstitial fluid in between brain cells to mix. While you're awake, your brain cells are working hard and generating a lot of waste products such as beta amyloid protein. When too much beta amyloid builds up in the brain, it can aggregate and invade brain cells, causing them to die. This is one of the driving factors behind Alzheimer's dementia. So, if the glymphatic system is primarily active during deep wave sleep, or slow wave sleep, and it is the only way for your brain to get rid of beta amyloid protein buildup, can loss of sleep eventually cause dementia? Can one night of sleep deprivation lead to increased beta amyloid levels in the brain? The answer to both of these questions is yes. A 2018 study looking at levels of beta amyloid protein in the brains of 20 healthy people after one night of good sleep and after one night of sleep deprivation. After a night of no sleep, 
these brains showed a significantly higher amount of amyloid beta protein in specific levels of the brain, including the right hypothal or hippocampus and the thalamus. A 2023 prospective cohort study examined people in their 60s and 70s who underwent two sleep studies an average of about five years apart. All of these people were then followed for 17 years to determine how many cases of dementia would develop over that period of time. The researchers found that for every 1% decrease in slow wave sleep per year between the two sleep studies, there was a corresponding 27% increase in the risk of dementia developing 17 years later. So we can see that loss of slow wave sleep can lead to toxic beta amyloid accumulation because the glymphatic system is not working to its full potential. We can also see how that loss of slow wave sleep and therefore loss in function of the glymphatic system can also increase your risk of dementia. This really drives home the importance of getting enough slow wave sleep to allow your brain an opportunity to clear waste products like beta amyloid protein, which can eventually build up and destroy brain cells over time. Although the amount of slow wave sleep does naturally decline in later life, I think that optimizing the amount of time that your brain spends in slow wave sleep is a way that you can lower your risk of developing dementia later in life. Thank you for listening. I hope this is helpful for you.